Hello everybody, it's Gary Stuckey with Real Music. On today's podcast episode, I've got the one and only Trev Lukather, son of Steve Lukather, of Toto, of course. And Trev plays a mean guitar too. He's got a brand new single out called You Wish. He's got a brand new wife, Madison Kane, daughter of Jonathan Kane of Journey. I'm going to talk about all that and so much more. Had a lot of fun talking to Trev, as always. Here he is. Here's Trev Lukather. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, uh, but congratulations on the wedding. Uh, It was in People Magazine, right? It was, yeah. That was a a, a last-minute thing that was kind of laid on us. And uh, through our photographer, Kelly, who is just amazing, a dear friend of ours, super talented and um she works with people a lot she works with a lot of different um magazines and stuff and um she mentioned to people about um about our wedding and and people were like we want to do an exclusive on it they were very stoked about it and uh and we were just we were like wow that's cool and uh you know they mentioned the single and everything i was like this is great you know (laughs) <laughs> great like, okay i married the love of my life and they're also mentioning my first single on people magazine this is cool talk yeah. about timing that's what i was thinking how do you have time to you know you're getting married you got a new single out you know has anybody ever done that ever in the history of anybody I'm, i have a new single out and i just got married probably not but you know my management they threw out the date and they're like you know because the more i was like talking to labels labels were loving the record it's just, you know, man, it was one of those things where it kept like just being talks, 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 talks. We'll talk further, blah, blah, blah. Then we get to the end of the year and I'm like, listen, I, you know, my management and I like my managers have been, have worked with, you know, all the streaming companies, like actually worked in them and also, you know, in, in major labels as well. So it was like the connections that we have, it was like, let's just put something out because I wanted to jump on it early because I want to play shows, man. And the, yeah. and the more that we were waiting, I've been sitting on this record for a year and a half, you know? Wow. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah. So I was just waiting for the right time, you know, find the right home. And there were a bunch of great opportunities for, for, uh, you know, certain labels that, that would release it. But the more, you know, things were just kind of lagging and, and like, you know, also it's really about TikTok numbers and all these things that mm. are just kind of like irrelevant to the music. And, right. I, you know, I'm really all about the music. And of course, I have to play the game and do all that stuff. But it's not really anything that I want to do. Yeah. Um, I I just want to play and I want to write and and I want to perform and produce and all that stuff. So my management just basically looked at me and says, you know, how about we we self-release the first song and get some kind of buzz going get it out there just to give people a taste and and why that's why we chose you wish because you wish was the first song that i recorded for the record and it kind of really set up the the overall sound and that i would that i i wanted and that i would roll with for the record yeah. um so it just felt like the perfect like teaser tune you know um that we that we wanted to to, to introduce to to the world and then now you know since we put something out there now we're holding off a little bit more because there's some things, you know, about teaming up um, further with other people. It's just, yeah. I just wanted to get something out there so I can get the ball rolling. So sure. I can play shows by the, you know, summertime. Yeah. Well, the song, you know, of course you wish when somebody says you wish it sounds like sarcasm or it sounds like they did something wrong to you. <laughs> so you go, you wish man, well, so there's got to be a story. That, that, that's 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 the purpose of it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's got to be something. There's got to be some reason why you wrote "You Wish." What's the reason that you wrote "You Wish"? Well, I don't think it's any kind of secret of what the you know, as far as people that know me and know my 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 history and, and know you know the past and my old band and all that stuff and how I, you know, kind of just, you know, really got the short end of the stick from my last situation. Yes. And, you know, I was very angry by what happened and, and, uh, it just basically, instead of 
crying about it. I was like, let's make some music. And the the overwhelming support that I got from that situation from all my musician friends, not just not only like the fans of the band, but like, but like, you know, my musician yeah. buds, they, yeah. they were all calling me, leaving me messages and texting me and being like, Hey, whatever you're doing, we got your back. We want to work. I want to work with you. Blah, 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 blah. What are you doing? What's next? And I was like, let's go, you know, let's not waste any time. And I had a lot to say. So, you know, it was kind of more, of the therapy tune for what I went through. Right. And and for me, it's a very all tongue in cheek, you know, it's, it's, it's what I call the self love angst anthem because it's just like, you know, it's the, you can't be me. And I know you wish it's, it's all just like, listen, I'm now on my own. I'm, I'm my own person and I'm my own fucking, uh, band. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see you, I'll, I'll see you when the dust clears kind of vibe, you oh, know? Wow. And, uh, wow. and that was, that, that was basically what, what drove that tune to, to what it became. Well, also with yeah. the help of Steve Majora, oh, yeah. who is a beast and, awesome. Jake, and Jake Hayden, yeah. um, you know, he plays drums and Dorothy and him and I go back 17 years, Majora and I go back over a decade and wow. and you know then christian atard who plays sugar ray heart megan trainer one of the most badass mother he has a band yeah. called intergalactics like one of the most badass motherfucking bass players and then we got the 504 horn section uh, from new orleans and it was just you know i worked with my cousin jake on it um it, it just it was really just one of those it felt you know man it was such a relief and such th- like therapeutic situation because I was in such a bad, um, it's almost like getting out of a terrible relationship. And then you start, you, you, you then realize, oh my God, wait, wait, it's really, it's fun to make music. Right. You know, it's, oh my gosh, it's so free. Right. You know, it's so free to work with people that are smiling all the time. And there's no ego and all this stuff. It's everyone wants just to make the best, we, best thing we can make and, and support each other, you know? So it was, it was just it, a love. Ex- this whole album was made out of love, man, you know? And, uh, and and just I, I was very humbled by it the whole time. Yeah. Well, I remember the last time I talked to you. You know, I don't even think you released the album yet with Lavara, and you were excited about it, and there was all kinds of things going on, and then like they just dropped you, and it just went all went south. You know. So I was thinking, man, th- that sucks. But anyway, so are you thankful for all that you went through to kind of show you some yes. things? Did you learn some things? Yes. What all did you learn from, you know, man, I, I, I really, I really did so much for the band. You know, I, I mean, it was, it was all for one, one for all a mentality, you know, cause I had a project before the band that was actually really doing well. And, and we were charting on Spotify. We do, you know, we were moving, we were grooving. Mm-hmm. And it was like a project of me working with a bunch of different friends of mine that I love, um, uh, great producers and writers and just getting together and making a tune for fun, man, with no, with no expectations, but, you know, it started doing well. And then I got in the studio with Josh Devine and, and I got, you know, Sam Beccaro. And, and then we were looking for like, oh, who should sing? And originally it was going to be Brooklyn Allman, Greg Allman's daughter, who's a friend. And she's a badass, you know, singer. And, and she, you know, was kind of going through a lot of, you know, her uh, Greg passed away around that time. And and uh, so I was just scrolling through Instagram and came across, you know, Jules, the singer. And we're the, you know, it was all for fun, you know, because we we all had different things going on, but then it started kind of taking on time, life of its own, and then I kind of missed being in a band. It was kind of one of those things like, oh, because the other project was just me, it's like a, yeah. you know, the singer and and doing that, and I was like, man, being in a band, and I was with Sam, you know, especially with the Picaro thing, like I was like, man, this is really, this feels really good. So, you know, I I put all my put all my attention into the band and dropped what I had going on. And, you know, man, in the beginning, it was really great. It was, it was really good vibes. And, 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 you know, the singer was, was happy to be there. Um, and then things quickly turned, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, you know, you, you do one big tour and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, the hot shit attitude comes into the room and it's right. just like, give me a break, you know, cause when people are inexperienced, that's how they're going to act. It, you know, when you, when you grow up in it and you know that everything is just, a, you know, you're lucky to fucking even have an opportunity mm. and we're all just people. And, you know, the fabulousness is such a joke, but you know, with inexperienced people, they don't understand that. So mm. they just think 
they swallow, you know, they drink their own Kool-Aid and, and, and then you have to deal with that. And especially when, when they're so, so inexperienced, it's so green to the business. It's like, you know, they have a lot to say without anything to back it up, you know? So it just, it, it, the tensions between me and the singer were so deep, you know, and, and, and just, it was just, it, it eventually just reached a point where he obviously forgot where, you know, he forgot how, how, you know, just where he was and, and how far we came and, and, and how much I had his back. And, yeah. and that just left the room. It just, it was more about like, Hey, I want to be the leader of the band. Hey, I'm the singer. Hey, me, 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 me. And, uh, you, you know, he, he, I literally put the whole fucking, uh, everyone around us, the management, the, the, the tours, the label, like everything, man. And just, just so ungrateful that guy. So it was just like, all right. He thought that, okay, we made a record. I don't need you anymore. Wow. Peace. Yeah, you know, right. I have the, we have the manager, we have this, we have this, you know, he thought it was all about him. And then that's quickly, he got the reality check you know, and, and, and that, and I'm sure he really, you know, I've talked to, I talked to him once, you know, and that was actually probably a few months ago. Oh, he, wow. he reached out to me after like, you know, over a year, ever since he, you know, kicked me out of the band, emailing me. Right. Um, and he texted me and, and I was, and I was like, and I wrote it back. I was like, once again, dude, you know, you're just writing me something like no, nothing behind it, right. you know, uh, just like the email you sent me and then he called me and then he, you know, and then he was in the beginning, very intense. And then it just kind of reminded me of why we couldn't even stand being in the same room together. But then, and then, you know, he calmed down and then, you know, we talked, but yeah, let's just say that, you know, the regret is deep um, of decisions that were made, you know? Um, but at the end of the day, man, it's, it is what it is. And I started producing a ton after that whole thing happened and during the pandemic and, I started building up a career on the side, just producing people and, and working with a lot of great artists that, you know, were really just were like happy to be working together and like showing just the mutual respect in the room, which was lagging very hard with that old band. So yeah. it's been such a groove with that. And then making my own record was just, wow, like just too much fun. And, and so like that shit's in the past, you know, I mean, obviously it's always going to sting because it was three years of my life and, and all of our lives. And, and we, we, ha we went so, we came so far, I mean, it was such a great record and had such an amazing opportunity and, and, and for it to actually never see the light of day because we, we never even played a show together with, the, with the new record, um, or the debut record. It was, it was just, what a, what a, just, what a loss, you know? <laughs> so it's just it's like, sad, all right, well, you can't just, what's up? Yeah, it's just a sad story. Have you you put all your time and energy into everything, and it's like, you know, the end, right? Uh huh. Uh -oh. And you know, these are people that, like, at a time, I considered, you know, family, and and now, you know, none of us talk to each other really. Yeah. Um, Josh Devine's on the record. He's on my record because one of the songs. Um, was a was an idea that I had for the Lavara second record that we started building up, mm -hmm. um, and I just decided to rewrite the whole song. I, I had the hook idea already, and Josh tracked drums, and um, I was like, you know, I really want to work on this tune. So I hit him up, and and I said, hey man, you know, I can get the, tr the drums retracted or whatever, and, and you know, Josh and I had a few conversations and. You know, he, 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 he and I, like we were roommates, like we were civil, man. And we talked it out and he, all of it was, he's like, I wish I would have called you and talked to you. And, you know, everything was just mismanaged a lot of, there's, there's a lot of bad decisions. So anyway, um, so we were, we were, we're on good terms, you know? And so he was like, no, man, I want to be a part of it. Let's, you know, he's like, please keep my drums, use them, please. And I was like, all right. Cause I mean, Josh is a badass drummer, yeah. man, you know? So yeah. it was a cool little final closure with josh being involved in um in 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 my record too you know and josh was always a big support for me um you know, when we first met he knew of me i knew of him he loved what i was doing um even like an old ep that i made back in the day he listened to and and you know i, I thought he was just an incredible drummer and, and so you know the, the the vibe there and the support there um is there you know uh, and it'll always be there. Sure. So it was cool to have him a part of it. Yeah. Um, 
Well, the the new song though, "You Wish," uh, and to me, it sounds like an '80s song. It, it's got that Peter Gabriel thing going on. Was that on purpose to sound like Peter Gabriel? Yes, yes, one million percent. Yeah. Peter Gabriel is one of my all time no, like influences as an artist. Uh, the So album, I think, is one of the best albums ever made. Oh, yes. um, I loved how eclectic he was. I loved how he really put together the people that he wanted to work with and 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 everything like you had the songs that were like funky with the horns and yes. and and the, the, the tongue-in-cheek lyrics and but then you had in your eyes or you had you know red rain um don't give up you have like these vibey tracks yeah. so like you know there's, there's like three songs on the record that are like kind of like more melodic balladish ish songs so you know i just kind of channeled my inner peter gabriel but except you know a wall of guitars and guitar solos which then you could kind of get that prince vibe from it yeah. uh steve majora brought a lot of that like george clinton prince um uh, stab key stuff that i fucking love yeah. um so it just really kind of became its own little beast you know just with a with, with a blonde ginger singing <laughs> that's right and and a great job, by the way. I, I've been jamming to it, but uh, yeah, it's a great song. Um, and uh, I saw that. Thank you, you, man. Well, you're welcome. Uh, you were listening to it with. I think you uh, let people hear like just the uh, harmonies and and everything like that. How cool mm-hmm. is that, man? That those harmonies and everything of that. Well, yeah, Steve, Steve Majora, man. I mean, and my cousin. It was us three that did all the vocal. I mean, like uh, the background vocals. Um, Jake my cousin has a great high voice too. So he does some belting in it. And, um, and Steve Majora though, <laughs> you know, when we first started work, when I started working on this track, you know, Majora's like, Oh man, well, I gotta, I- I'm just hearing so much shit. You gotta let me fuck with this. And I said, okay. Right. So he just started building in front of me, like all of these, it, like he could change his voice into so many different characters where it actually sounds like different people singing. So he builds a choir around it. And wow. it's like, you just, I just was, I mean, I have this cackle laugh, man. Right. And, and I was cackling through, through most of, most of what I was hearing. And, and when you hear it alone and you just hear everything together, I mean, it's just one of those like, wow, man, like it, it's just such a trip of, of how many tasty elements are in every song, like every song in this record, you know, you really should listen to every song, like maybe like four or five times yeah. just to get like, just picking up on certain other little you know, musical treats in there that are very, very just like sometimes, you know, dialed back or pushed back in the mix. But like, there's just always, there's so many um, ear candy parts going on, man, throughout the whole song. It's, 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 it's a trip. It sounds great. And, and, uh, and I did notice the lyrics, uh, it says, you are not the clown. Then you go, yeah, you are. (laughs) I thought that was pretty cool. (laughs) <laughs> you're not the clown yeah you are <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> well it's like you wish you, you wish you were not the clown yeah. but yeah you are yeah you, you wish know. you're not the clown yeah, um, yeah you are yeah i mean it, you know and then having little like yeah the little talk vocal thing and you know i was doing the vocals uh <laughs> with my cousin you know he was tracking me and and uh you know doing those kind of things uh we were just kind of laughing in the room, you know, cause I mean, I was writing on a, writing on a lot of emotions, man, in that, you know, recording that song. So it was a good ther- therapy sessions. I call them the therapy sessions, man, you know? Um, and, but it, it brought me out of the darkest place mentally, you know, cause I was, it was a horrible betrayal that I felt like I just like, just, you know, when you feel like it's like, it's almost like finding out that your parents aren't your parents, right. you know, they were, you were lied to and, and, or like you were used and, you know, growing up in the music industry, man, and growing up in LA, you know, I got used a lot. Yeah. So I always had my guard up, but then I also, I'm very emotional and I'm a very loving person. So then I'll let my guard down. And, uh, that kind of tends to people letting me down. So, um, you know, that was a major heartbreak me so for 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 the love that i received making this record and the support i got from all the all you know people that have supported me and and supported the the old band and you know i did not expect that 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 uh, type of um i guess reaction i i felt that maybe okay maybe half the people will be pissed you know but then they're gonna be like all right cool um you know we'll see them on the road or whatever Mm -hmm. 
And then I thought the other half would be like, you, you know, onwards, you know, who cares, you know, <laughs> but when, when, when like 99% of people, yeah. uh, had my back, I was very overwhelmed by the love. So, you know, that got, you know, it, it got a little brutal. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I kind of felt like, okay, this is like really bad, you know, it's right. kind of, you know, I don't, I don't support internet bullying at all. Right. Um, you know, like in the beginning, I was like, wow, man, people really have my back. It's really sweet. And then after a while, I'm like, Oof, okay, all right, we don't need to you know, <laughs> turn them in, turn them into hamburger meat, yeah, you know? Really, uh, really. So, you know, it just, it, but, but all of that got me through just like the support I had got me through and the friends that I have got me through. And the people that I finally got to work with on this record were like, you know, it was very humbling. And we got, we got like Abe Aboreal Jr. man on oh, a couple wow. tracks. Um, yeah. And, and Josh Paul from Daughtry, he's one of the most badass yeah, bass players, nice. Bryce Zoderberg from Lifehouse. Cool. Um, one of my dear bros, Hector Maldonado from train. Cool. Um, you know, it's just, it's insane. The, the people that, that I was lucky enough to, to call and, and, and all of them just being like, no problem, man, I'm in, let's do it. You know, not, not one person is like, I can't do it, man. Yeah, right. You know, it was just really, wow. You know, so that, was just you know every tune is just very special it is it is definitely the diary of my life that's for sure because i lost two best friends during the pandemic um and so there's a song called what we lost um and you know just every song has its purpose in my heart you know and so i feel that's why people will connect to the music because it's about as real as it gets for me you know when you're in a band you have to do it's a democracy. So you have to, you, your vision might not fully come through, right. but with this, I can happily say that it did, you know, but, but over expectation because I worked with such incredible people. Yeah. Um, or and could you get Steve Perry to come and, and record or, or was that, <laughs> I know last time he, he you recorded. know, man, what's so funny about, you know, it's so funny, man. I, uh, I sent Perry the song called the sound and it's more of like the ballad, tune and i said hey man i'm working on my soul record check it out and he called me within like 10 minutes and uh you know man you know take i've always been the lead singer of bands when i was growing up and um you know taking the back seat of the old band you know it was uh it was cool i, I kind of liked having this like huge this really high tenor singer and all mm -hmm. that stuff but you know then obviously dealing with what i've dealt with it's like okay he goes okay you can't hang with the lead singers in your band um like I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go just go back to being me. And I've been working with Dave Stroud, who um, is one of the most, the best vocal coaches in the world. And he uh, actually went out with Arnell um, this past the, and worked with my dad and cool. worked with Adam Lambert, cool. you know, Mike Posner. And, I mean, you name it. And he worked with Perry. Uh, you know, just he he got me into that mindset of being the guy. He called me when the whole band thing went down he says dude you don't need anybody and this is in 1985 where you need to have a tenor singer like you could do this on your own you don't need anybody so he brought me into that into that full you know into just that 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 character and um so when i uh when i sent perry the track because i felt like that was more up his alley yeah. he uh he called me within 10 minutes and you know, obviously, you know, as a guitar player, I just, some of my heroes, man, the support I get as with my playing from some of the people that I grew up admiring is just so humbling, you know, but taking over the lead singer part, you know, obviously one of my favorite of all time is, is Steve. So sure. he called me and he's like, man, this track is great, man. Oh my gosh, who's singing lead? And I'm like, <laughs> me. And he's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, bro, that vibrato, he was he was so and steve doesn't fuck around man he doesn't lie he he doesn't blow smoke that's just not right. who he is mm -hmm. steve can't blow smoke so you know he would tell me oh man you know it's not there man you know but i dig what you're doing you're almost there you mm -hmm. know that 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 would be you know the the reaction that steve would say if it wasn't happening mm -hmm. but you know for him to call me and and really really love on on what i was doing and and loved my voice and my tone and my and my vibrato yeah. and all that stuff like that to me was the the seal of approval that I needed right. and to have one of the best singers of all time and my dear brother say that to me it was uh that 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 to me was just all all I needed to for me to be like all right man I'm the, I, the this is it this is it let's go you know 
I agree. I, I don't think you need to listen to any negativity after that. You can just say it's sealed. Like he says, it's done. Steve has spoken the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, man. It's like, you know, I, I, I was so excited when I was releasing the song. I was like, I'm excited for all the, the, the amazing feedback and I'm excited for the bad feedback, man. You know, because yeah. I'm just happy that, that, that it was getting out there. And, you know, when you are, this you know a kid of someone very successful you're always going to be there's always going to be the haters man and even if you're not you know it doesn't matter your music gets in front of people and people are going to there's going to be certain people that just shit on you man and that's fine i mean you can't be in the music scene if you can't take a fucking tyson punch to the gut to the balls and to the face constantly you know um so you know to be honest i was very taken back by how little of bad feedback that we got i mean there's always the haters but like sure. you know it's it, it's to me it just it just doesn't affect me in any way but you know i think you're doing something wrong if you don't have haters yeah. so, <laughs> um <laughs> seriously some but something yeah weird. man i mean we're yeah so it was, it was great, man. Yeah. You know, I just I'm just happy that songs out there, and 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 you know, I'm these next tunes rolling out, or it's just gonna it's gonna surprise everybody each tune, man. You know, and um, they all have a life of their own, and yeah, I'm I couldn't be more stoked. And so, um, so all these songs are like I guess autobiographical and and things like that. So and people can relate to them and things like that. So I guess the next time you do an album you can write about happier stuff like Mary and Madison Kane, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's true. I haven't really actually uh, sat down and, and really taken that in. Um, I mean, our wedding was so incredible, man. It's one of the most surreal experiences of my life and, and, you know, very spiritual. Uh, oh. And it was just, uh, I could not be more, stoked and madison is my best friend she we we were even laughing on her honeymoon you know when people get all scared of commitment you know there's a lot of young people that are just scared of commitment sure. or, or you know don't want to take the plunge or whatever you know um but when we were in in our on our honeymoon we just felt even ever at our wedding it's just this sense of this elevated energy you know like we're like one we're family now like her and i awesome. and it felt so great it's feel, it feels so great that like you know it's better like it's better than it was before we got married right. so it just now we're now it's just like this spiritual bond that we have and then as cliche as it is man when you know you know <laughs> that's what i say man you know when you know you know and and i knew from you know week one that madison was the one and you know, now we're almost four years. We're over four years together, and, and uh, it, it's stronger than it was back then. That's so awesome. And uh, I wrote a song called "Miss Electric" on the record that's about her, but it's oh, not okay. as you know. I mean, it's not like the yeah. There's not. There's. It's not as because I wrote on my old bands. I, I wrote the song uh, like ma- mostly wrote the song that was the ballad on the record above you. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, that I wrote for Madison and, and Jules tweaked a few lyrics and uh, that one he wanted to bring a little bit of a drama a dramatic tone to the lyrics so uh, but for the most part it was, it was just basically a sappy love song <laughs> before <laughs> um, and uh, you know so like I haven't exactly dived into that yet it, you know I, I have eight songs mixed and mastered I think I'm just going to keep it at that um, and you know, really the next record will be the love, you know, probably most definitely a love song for her. And, sure. and you know, and then I'm going to probably do a lot of uh, featuring, you know, get, get my friends that I want to do tracks with and, you know, the artists that I know that are in the scene right now and yeah. just kind of uh, collaborate with them and, you know, just kind of continue to build up, man, you know, so when can we expect the new album to be released? Well, that's the thing. So my whole thing, and I think that even with this situation that's kind of in the works right now, it's just kind of teaming up with partners for the next releases. 
um, to give it a real shot. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I think that it'd be cool. I want to release songs every like six weeks. And I think that it'd be cool to have four releases out and drop the last, you know, the the back four as an album um, around my birthday, which is May. Mm -hmm. May the 4th be with you is my birthday. So um, I thought that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, man. I, I think it would be kind of cool to have uh, have my, my, my record come out on my birthday or something or the week of my birthday and, and kind of maybe do a birthday party and, and you know, maybe perform it live, maybe do a live stream. I'm like, there's a lot of ideas I have in my head, um, you know, if as long as I have. And that's another reason why release, you know, I wanted to release on my own as well is because you have the power to put out music when you want to put it out. And mm-hmm. instead of like, you know, and I when I was on a label, man, I've had two different label experiences as far as an artist and i was never happy never happy man and you know you're the only person that's going to believe in you more than you is nobody (laughs) oh it's like you're going to push you're going to push to get everything moving and grooving and you know i like having the power of like just releasing when i want to release songs instead of like if you're on a label they can be like oh well you know this this release is we need to put out and blah, blah, blah. a lot of my friends that are on labels are stuck on labels and and you know but this this certain situation I'm talking about for me is like teaming up where it's kind of like I think we would still have uh, that say to put out stuff we're just gonna have a little bigger push behind it right well that sounds like a plan that uh, I think it's going to be big. I, you know, I said that about Lavar. I think that would have been if it hadn't been all the drama and all that. I think, you know, things happen for a reason, of course. Right. One million percent. And, you know, I felt that, too, with the old band. We all felt that we were on to something real big. I mean, I feel that now with my record, though. I mean, it's just because I, I just the team. Like what we had, like Steve Strange was our agent for Lavara, legendary guy, Coldplay, Eminem, yeah. like X Ray was it was his company, and he passed away. Um, un, like he just kind of kept his illness away from everybody, and I even was emailing with him um, just yeah. weeks before he died. Yeah. But we already broke up the band, obviously by then. But I was keeping in contact with Steve because he's just such a. Uh, I mean, when we when we, him and I talked on the phone when he took on the band, like we talked on the phone for two hours, like just we just instantly bonded so you know mad respect for him and so i obviously always kept in touch and um he did, he kept it you know he didn't mention anything to me um and then he he passed away of cancer and um mm. you know when he passed away it was like you know having steve on the team with the band i mean he got us on you know he, he booked us for hellfest wow. grass pop music festival we were going to open for foreigner wow. an arena tour in europe um, he got a lot of things for us with literally without our record even being out. So with Steve on her side, um, I felt, wow, this can really, this can really, really do something. And then the band breaks up and Steve sadly passed away. And I was like, wow, man, like, mm-hmm. well, that would, you know, like losing Steve to the music world in general is just, that's, that's just a, a person that can never be replaced, you know? Yeah, sure. um, but, you know, you can't do the what ifs in your head um you know to be honest we we were kind of not getting the love that we kind of thought we should as far as like the dsps and you know placements we weren't getting a lot of playlists going on for the old band um and you know it was it was an uphill struggle anyway um maybe it would have you know obviously could have caught on while we were on the road or something but it just wasn't showing a lot anyway right the bigger picture um i just feel the the energy in the world and the universe i'm you know just wasn't aligning because it just wasn't right it was forced man you know we made a great record together one thing about jules and i is you know we wrote great shit together um but outside of that there was nothing so i would i think it would have been detrimental to all of our, our 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 ourselves having to just force each other to deal with each other you know um i think that we it, you know it, it just it would have imploded no matter what yeah. so it was best that it imploded before it did anything other than you know the record's a massive hit and then we're really stuck with each other you know i think that i think we're the universe was cutting us all a break <laughs> right um 
Well, the you know the future looks bright though. I mean, some good things have happened since all that happened. I, I was I was always hoping that, you know I wasn't I didn't jinx you because I I talked to you right before that happened. I was like, I might have jinxed him, but I don't think so, right? <laughs> no, man. When we talked to you, everything was fine. Yeah, it was. You know, the band fun. was still together. You know, we we there wasn't you know this 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 kicking me out thing was it was something that I never thought would ever happen. Mm. You know, I mean, I knew that we needed to talk. I knew that we needed. I want to change with certain people in the team. Um, and I had some, some ideas, uh, but like, cause in all my ideas were never going to lead to anyone getting rat fucked, uh, you know, contracts that were signed, all these things. Yeah. Um, and, and our success would have benefited anyone that was involved, even if we had to make changes. So, uh, you know, they, you know, it just, I never thought in a million years that, the singer would ever do what he did i mean i knew that he was you know you know just kind of not understanding how everything goes um i never thought that would ever happen so you know it did (laughs) so when i was talking to you man everything was like oh yeah it's all gonna work out and 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 obviously i'm not i'm just more of like the music needs to be heard what our music can do to people to, to maybe, you know, just provide an escape if they're having a bad day, going through depression, um, you know, get it or get a horrible breakup, sure. all that stuff. That's what the music's about. It's not about me. It's not about Jewel. It wasn't about him. It wasn't about anybody. It's what we do with the music that counts. So that's why I was saying, hey, you know, this is three years of our lives. We've been hustling our asses off. We have this opportunity with the label, all this stuff. And, you know, we got to we got to make sure that this music's heard. And that's all I cared about. And uh, and, you know, yeah. But when we talked, you, you know, it was all it was all fine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, sure I mean, I, I like I'm so ex- <laughs> it went very south. Yeah. <laughs> and I and but like I now I'm so excited, um, you know, because working with Jake Hayden, who's like one of my dear brothers he was he plays with dorothy and you know i produced three songs on the last dorothy record and um and co-wrote it and i went and saw dorothy play last night at her live stream for twitch and and jake's her you know he played drums on the tracks i produced and then he went on tour he's been on tour with her ever since and and um you know madison looked at me because i want to get josh paul in my band and josh is just he's flying he's moving back to la and he and he wrote me. He says, "Hey, man, I'm I'm coming." He's been living in Nashville. He's like, "I'm coming back to L.A." And I was like, "Oh boy, you know cool. that that's that's just Christmas came early this year, man." You know, <laughs> um, and Steve Majora, obviously through you know on the breaks of Toto, but like these are all people that I absolutely respect, just the respect and the love and the support is so deep. And Madison looked at me last night. She's like, "Yeah, hey, you know, you know." <laughs> Think about like she's just like you know wow playing with people that you like, like are your friends that, like you get along and you have a good time and all these things it's like can you imagine that and I'm like oh, not no but yes <laughs> so it's just like that excitement of like being on stage with those guys and doing some live stuff is like I, I just the thought of it is literally the, the coolest thing I can imagine. And I just think that when people see this live and they see I get I'm able to get back out there and do it because it's going on three years since we've played a show. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm just gonna be back home, man. I'm more home on stage than I am anywhere. So to be up there with guys like that, yeah, it's gonna be next level, man. It's yeah. gonna be next level. So what about the shows? What kind of shows have you got lined up uh, coming up? There's no shows lined up yet. The thing is, is like, I don't want to blow my load too soon. You know, it's like you, you, you want to build a buzz enough to make sure people are going to come out. They're going to come see you. And, um, you know, and you could deliver a killer show. And I just want to make sure that we build the beasts enough to get to that point. Um, obviously the guys that I want to work with, are not cheap dudes. They're, they're fucking a class guys. So, you know, it's just gotta, the fun's gotta be there. The buzz gotta be there. Um, you know, man, and I'm producing so much that it's just one of those things where when the, when it all aligns and happens, it's going to happen. I just, uh, I'm taking it one step at a time and 
you know, either way, eventually I'm going to put a show together. Uh, I just would like to get on the road, but you know, in times of now it's very expensive yeah. and I just have to get it to a place where, you know, get the right agent, get all that stuff. Um, but the management and I, we already talked to promoters. Um, there's a lot of things that are in the works. It's just, I have to pull the trigger when it's right, when the time is right. And, and we're just getting started. So I'm hoping that's why I released something now is I'm hoping by end of summer that, that, that's when that will be the time to do it. You know, it's going to take probably six months before we even think about playing and doing anything. So for now, it's just, what can we do to build the buzz? Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's a good thing. I mean, I think, uh, yeah, you got the momentum going with this song and it's going to be, uh, it's going to take off and I'm, I'm believing positive things, nothing like the whole <laughs> Lavara thing, you know, but, some some positive stuff. <laughs> well, there, you know, the great thing about this, I can't fire myself. So that's right. That's, that's good news. <laughs> I <hope> um, not. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> um, you know, it was really cool because Apple Music supports has supported the single already. It put awesome. us on two big rock playlists, and you know, so for us to get uh some some already some some love off the bat matt pinfield i just saw him last night he has a show on klos uh he's gonna debut you wish um beginning of next year uh so like the support i'm getting just on my own um with no label is 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 like i said man just super humbling and i i'm just like really excited to just see how far we can take this and and i gotta say man my work ethic I'm going to take this as far as <laughs> I'm going to take this to the ends of the earth, man. You know? Sure. So, uh, you know, there's nothing that's going to stop it. Cause I, I believe so much of in, into this music that I just, there's nothing that's going to stop me from, from doing what I can to make sure as many ears and, uh, get their, get their ears on it and their eyes on it, man. You know? And, and what about a, a video videos for the, the next singles and everything like that? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, so Jake, my cousin, he did all the music videos for, for my old band and, uh, and you know, he did the the cover and he did the lyric video for my, for you wish. Right. And, you know, we wanted to do something super simple and, you know, with the, with the, with the cover that he did, I love the glasses. And I said, Hey man, is there a way that we could just like, you know, have the little, like, you know, hit me, you know, it's hypnotizing you yeah. while you're watching and, yeah. and, you know, can we just have it that going with the with the lyrics going and he says that's super easy so we're talking about video ideas man i have some great video ideas for the other for the i have a I have an incredible <laughs> music video idea for you wish but like you know it's just one of those things where we got to build it more yeah. it's got to get more buzz so we're not just making a video and and spending money without it really g- being worth it you know mm-hmm. um it, it's just it's all such infant stages right now and the more buzz it gets, that's when we can really dive into some really great music video ideas. And, and, and there's no shortage of that with Jake and I, Jake's like, really like he, he's really a brand, like he's helped me build the brand of, of, of what this record is and the look of everything. And, you know, he's my family and, and he's such a genius, man, like on all levels as an artist himself, but like, you know, uh, with, with his visual ideas and, and what he can do, it's, he's like a jack of all trades, man. So awesome. we have so many ama- amazing ideas that we want to do visually. And there's, and there's ways of getting these mu- some music videos done. I know that we got to do some kind of music video yeah. to keep the buzz going too. So it's just kind of waiting for the right time with that as well. But yeah, um, definitely going to be putting out a lot of visual stuff. It's just, we're just feeling everything out right now. And is, um, is Madison going to make an appearance in your videos? I'm sure she will, right? I mean, probably. I mean, she she sang backgrounds on a few songs. Cool. Um, she, she she's great. She's been making little appearances on all these records that I've been producing. Like, you know, we do a bunch of group vocals. She's because she's such a powerhouse singer herself. You know, right. so just getting her on the track is is just it's just always fun, man. And she's such a great singer. It's very quick, and um, so she'll definitely make appearance for sure i mean she is very involved with um with everything i do is she's just you know she's my partner man she's my rock she's she's like i listen to everything 
she has such great ideas. Um, she can, you know, and I go through my moments, man, she could talk me off the ledge, man. you know, it's just, <laughs> it's, you know, so she's going to be very much involved in, in obviously because we're, we're a family and we're one now. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of dealing. She's going to be a very big part of everything that's coming out. Awesome. Well, congratulations on the, the wedding and the new single and the new album coming out and everything. And I hope all the best for you. And I thank you for talking to me. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for your support, man. I really appreciate you, bro. Yeah, man. I'll be, uh, I'll be posting everything and, and really promoting you out there and uh, telling everybody about it. I think it's going to take off. Right on. Right on. Yes, sir. Uh, and Merry Christmas to you and Madison. Have a happy new year, man. We'll see you soon. All right, Gary. Take care, brother. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.